So you are in the process of maybe looking at something to make it possible to hunt at night. Well, maybe I have the product for you. Nowadays we see more and more people wanting to shoot at night, either doing some kind of pest control or doing some kind of vomiting. But some of these night vision scopes can really become super expensive and really take the fun out of the whole game if I can call it that. But luckily we have some other alternatives that we can use to cut down cost and still enjoy uh, shooting at night and making it possible to shoot at night obviously. Like with the scope made in the is standing right here next to me which I will open in just a second. Just a quick disclaimer before we start with this whole video, I quickly just want to mention I have not been paid or sponsored by Scopemate to say anything nice about this product. I bought it with my own money and I think I can give you guys a fair and honest review and opinion about this product. Okay, so when you get your Scopemate, um, it comes in a strong cardboard box uh, as you guys can see here, very sturdy and they can protect it in transport, which is really, really nice. The box just slides open like this. And on the inside, you can find the manual, which I'll strongly recommend reading if you are the first time uh, user of a product like this. Then there's a little cloth bag inside where you can store your unit in and also used to wipe it down or clean the lenses. Really nice touch there. Then on the inside we can find the unit itself with its, its accessories and um, I'm quickly going to touch on each accessory and compare it to the other brands as well and uh, give my thoughts uh, on that just to um, uh, speed up the, the video a little bit. So first of all let's talk about the clamp or the mount depending on how you want to call it or what you want to call it. This is the mount that basically goes onto the, the scope eyepiece. And this one is very unique and I think it's uh, copied from the Eagle Vision Cam uh, setup. Um, you can buy the Eagle Vision Cam's uh, clamp for the pods uh, separately but it's more or less the same as this and it's not, nice that this one comes with a clamp like this. Now how it works is you get these two plastic rings with it. One is bigger than the other. And then one is for a scope with a bigger eyepiece and the one is obviously for a scope with a smaller um, eyepiece. You'll just have to figure out which one will work better for you. But basically, this plastic ring goes into this aluminium or aluminum mount, depending on how you want to pronounce uh, that. Uh, but it can only go in one way. So one side of the plastic ring is flush and then the other side has a little slope to it. The side of the slope goes to the smaller ring and the flush uh, side obviously faces or face towards the, the bigger uh, ring. The small side of, these, um, of this uh, uh, little mount is where the whole unit clamps onto. I'll show you just now in a bit um, how that works. But really, really nice that they have included um, you know such a nice uh, mounting system for this uh, for this unit if I compare it to the, the pod and the one leaf the way those mounts work is you also slide it over the the eyepiece of the scope and then you have to fasten it with either an allen key or a, screw, a screwdriver but it does limit you a little bit because it uh, takes time to take it off one scope and then mount it onto the next where with this you can just fasten it by hand and loosen it by hand. It makes it much much easier and, um, and nicer to use than those other clamps. Nothing wrong with that, it's just a nice touch. Also included in the box is uh, a little bit of tape and what this tape is for is if you do have a scope where the eyepiece is still too small for the smallest plastic ring um, you can add a little bit of tape to the eyepiece and then basically it will make the smaller uh, the smallest 
plastic ring catch on the eyepiece then. It's not necessary, I must say, I've tried it um, on various of my scopes. The bigger one works very well on my um, Vector Optics Continental and the smaller ones work very well on the Immersive Optics, uh, which will, uh, there will be a video in the future of those scopes as well. Um, but again, just a nice touch that they, you know, thought of everything, you know, adding tape and all these kinds of things inside of the box. It just um, saves you more time, you know, going out and fetching things to make it work. Also included in the box is a USB cable for charging and um, this is a USB um, to micro USB. Um, I would have liked if they made the micro USB a type C because it's just a matter of time uh, for the micro USBs to, you know, um, phase out. Um, it's not a train smash, but um, uh, you know, it's just something to, uh, to mention as well. So um, it's nice that you have a, a cable included as well. You can also use this cable to, like I said, charge the, the unit or either run it from a, a dedicated battery uh, pack. Then the last thing in the box is obviously the unit itself. And um, let me quickly take it out. And you can straight away see there's a ton of similarities between the Scopemate NVS90 and the One Leaf NV100 and the well-known Bard NV007A. And uh, obviously you can also see there's a lot of things copied from the uh, well-known Bard uh, NV007A. But I think they stuck with this concept or design because it's a design that works. You only have so much space uh, to make things fit. You don't want a bulky thing to go sit on your scope and make it uncomfortable to use. So uh, let's uh, quickly have a look at the whole unit itself. I'll also run through it as well and then uh, compare it as I go on with the other brands. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So if you own a pod or a one leaf, you'll know that um, the whole housing is made out of plastic and so is the Scopemate NVS90. Um, it is made out of plastic, but I think the reason for that is to make it a bit more lighter and also to save cost. Um, I really cannot complain about um, the plastic uh, feeling on uh, the unit. It doesn't feel like it's you know, a very thin plastic or something that will quickly break. Although I do think if you do drop this, there are some components that might break on it. So uh, oh, just take care of your, your things and it will last. Anyways, uh, let's uh, quickly take a look at the front part first and then we'll move to the back. So let's uh, start with the lens. The lens is a 16 millimeter lens um, and so are the lenses on the pod models and also the one leaf uh, model. And I honestly wish they can give us the, the option to choose from a 16, a 14 or a 12 millimeter lens. And my reason for that is you lose so much field of view when you have a 16 millimeter scope of a 16 millimeter lens attached to your scope. Um, and especially shooting at night or hunting at night, um, you want the most out of the scope if you take a shot and there's something else that you want to shoot, you can quickly move to uh, that specific position. Um, so it does limit you a little bit with field of view, but it's not just on the scope mate. It goes right through from part to one leaf. Obviously there are other brands as well, but I'm just comparing these three with each other for today's um, uh, video. Um, the lens can be adjusted right here at the bottom. Uh, you adjust the focus onto the reticle and then from there you basically use the parallax uh, on your scope to get the whole picture then into focus. Um, really, really nice. I must say it's super smooth, uh, really rigid in such a way that, you know, if you bump the gun or something, it's not going to lose focus. So um, really, really nice. 
uh, other piece on the unit it's itself that's made out of aluminium or aluminum uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it is the fitting for the mount itself obviously you want it to be stronger not made out of plastic because if you take it on and off the whole time it's going to wear out very quickly so basically how it works is this um, little plate here has two ears and you have two cutouts here on the, the mount itself. You just line those holes and ears up together. And you just get it there. And then you just slide, uh, twist it clockwise and you will hear a clicking noise. Just kind of, kind of sturdy. Here we go. Like that. And that thing is very, very, very sturdy there with no wobble, no play, which is nice again because you don't want any interference when you want to take a shot, you know, where there's ever so slightly a little bit of wobble or whatever, and then, you know, lose your concentration when you want to take a shot. Um, things that steady like this will also last longer because when there's play, it wears out. If you want to take it off, there's a little button on the side, you just press it. It is kind of stiff, you just press it in and then you twist the whole mount anti-clockwise and it comes off. Really, really nice. Then you have your battery compartment. The cap of the battery compartment and a part of the battery compartment is aluminium or aluminium again. And it takes the standard 3.7 volt 18650 battery. Um, unfortunately, I cannot give you uh, proper facts when it comes to how long you're gonna run this unit on a battery. The reason for that is you can go buy two exactly the same batteries from the same brand but one will be different from the other and there's a lot of factors that you have to keep in mind like running the IR on high setting or low setting for how long do you keep the unit on that do you turn it into sleep mode all kinds of things out of experience shooting in the day I got around 30 minutes with a battery so I tend to carry a couple of batteries with me and swap it out as I go. This is for daytime hunting. I think at night it will be a little bit different uh, because with the IR running, you will drain the batteries much quicker. This is where the battery bank comes into play and uh, you can run it straight off the, um, the battery bank using the, the provided USB cable. So I'm just uh, struggling to get this rubber cap off here this is the compartment where the the uh, SD uh, card goes into the micro SD card goes into and then also your uh, charging cable just keep it in mind um, that there are some risks basically running the unit of a battery bank you may it may happen that you can bump it and break the micro USB um, terminal off right in the uh, the port right there and uh, I honestly think you can damage it and basically ruin your product then so just be very careful if you tend to maybe run it in such a, a matter um, so yeah it's just like I said just something to, to keep in mind then uh, talking about the IR which is very very interesting uh, it is rated for 300 meters and um, I thought it is, uh, you know, just one sales gimmick again, you know, this little torch shining out at 300 meters. I have a IR torch that I bought years ago when I had a 18 x uh 2, I think. I can't remember the specific model. And this um, torch is rated for 300 meters. I compared both of them side by side and I can tell you out of honesty and show you in this video that this little thing can shine up to 300 meters i don't necessarily think you are going to hunt at night at 300 meters but it does shine up to 300 meters you have a setting or three settings that you can use for the ir uh, uh, setting number one two and three where setting number one is obviously the lowest and setting number three the highest um, you have a little zoom function here as well where you can zoom it all the way in and it makes a little square um, when you 
zoomed it in all the way so you focus the point or the beam of the the ir to a specific point just keep in mind that uh, there is a slight bit of play on the lens of the ir so it might shift a little bit around um, but if you press it ever so slightly back i found that um, you know you get a better a better picture at the end of the day and if you want to look a bit closer with a more um, like a floodlight type of uh, view with the IR you just push it all the way back and now it's zoomed out all the way and you can you know see a bit more around around uh, you with this or looking through it so basically that's basic basically standard compared to the other um, the other units like the part and the one leaf um, I just know out of experience that this can really do 300 meters I'm not too sure about the others then uh, taking a look at the the eyepiece itself the screen inside of it is a HD OLED screen inside here really crystal clear with no lag or jitter to it um, it has a nice rubber um, eye protection cap here so if you mount it on a center fire rifle that has recoil um, it will protect your eyes so you don't knock your eye out um, it also has a aluminium or aluminium um, focus ring which again is very smooth and steady so you can focus it up to your eye if you may be wearing glasses or whatever the case may be uh, again probably very standard towards the, uh, the pod and the one leaf and um, again really really nice then taking a look at the controls now again this might be very similar to the other brands but i quickly just want to run through it so you can more or less know what's going on and then also i want to shed some light on something that i don't like about this section here so first of all we take a look at the middle button right here in the center this is your on off button for the unit if you hold it in for a couple of seconds the unit will turn on and then if you press the the on off button for one second you will turn it into sleep mode to wake it up again you just uh, press it for one second again or just tap it and it will come on again now there are some issues regarding that which i will get into in just a bit it's also your ok button for when you are in the menu then taking a look at the left hand side button if you look at look at it like this um, this is your IR button. This is where you increase or decrease the intensity of the IR beam. Your setting one, two, and three, like I mentioned before. And if you keep it in for, or hold it in for a couple of seconds, you will turn it over from night mode to day mode and day mode to night mode, vice versa. Then taking a look at the button below, which I honestly think is a waste of time, is the, the picture button. I honestly don't think you're ever going to take pictures with this rather use your phone it's going to look much better than you know using your phone then uh, through this just picture wise um, and then obviously it's a zoom button as well uh, if you want to zo digitally zoom in when you are recording as well but just keep in mind again when digitally uh, zooming in you will lose quality of your picture that you may be wanting to take or your your video that you're busy taking or recording um, the reason why I say this is a waste of time, I will get into that in just a bit, hang on. Then the right hand side button is your menu button and play button. Uh, there's a couple of uh, things on, in the menu that you can fiddle around with, um, which I will also get into in just a bit. And then obviously your play button if you quickly want to review a video or a photo if you took a photo. Then your top button which is your record button. And this button basically fills in the gaps of all the other things that I wanted to say. Your record button works in such a way that you have to hold it in for a second and then it will start recording. And then you hold it in for a second again and it will stop. You also have the function in the settings where you can um, basically program it to record either uh, in a certain um, lengths of video. So I think the maximum length is 10 minutes. Uh, then you have one minute let me quickly just refer to the manual sorry I can't specifically remember that um, where was it where was it hmm. 
yeah, you have you have three minutes, uh, five minutes, and obviously ten minutes that you that you can uh, choose from when hitting that record button. Um, now, the reason why I say this button basically fills in the gaps of all the other buttons. With the record button, you basically have the brightness um, level button for the brightness of the the screen for the eyepiece. Now, if you for some reason it happened to me a lot of times when i press the record button and i hold it in for uh not long enough to say for less than a second i would either adjust the the brightness of the um uh the eyepiece or you know uh maybe hit record so i would strongly recommend them in a future model please take out the photo button and move the brightness setting to the bottom so you have a dedicated um, record button only it irritates the living crap out of me if i have to um, take a shot if i want to record this shot and i have to hold the button in for one second sometimes it feels like i have to hold it in for more than one second before it starts recording um, and then when I want to take that shot, you guys will see it in, in the upcoming hunting video where I use this. I have to hold the button in and make sure it shows record and then I can leave it and take the shot. It takes too much time. You don't have a lot of time when you hunt and you cannot run this thing flat out recording the whole time. You will waste um, your uh, space on your card and you will waste battery uh, power as well. So if they can make that button a dedicated record button where you can just press it like when you press the button for the sleep mode on the, the screen, um, that would be super, super great. Then coming back to the sleep mode um, of the, uh, the on off button, I have found if I put the unit in sleep mode um, and wake it up again, the brightness of the eyepiece is not where I've set it, but it's the default brightness. Then I have to fiddle around again with the brightness to get it where I want and then just waste time again. So it's small things, um, minor things that, um, you know, maybe can be fixed, maybe with a, a firmware update. Um, but it would have been really nice if we can just have a dedicated um, on off or not on a record button also that i want to mention you have a little light here that turns green when you switch on the unit um, there's no beeping noises and things obviously you don't want any sounds when you are hunting at night you will scare off whatever you want to shoot so you just have to look at that green led coming on when you want to record okay so after we had a look around the whole unit itself there's one last thing that um, we cannot see but this functionality is available in all the mentioned products and that's wi-fi um, basically you can download the, the uh, recommended app install it on your phone or on your tablet and then basically connect your phone or tablet uh, to the the unit itself and basically see what the shooter is seeing so now that we have all those things out of the way um, we can now talk about prices i'm gonna keep the prices in dollars and um, i'm gonna uh, the reason why i'm doing that is um, we can buy all of these units directly from china and um, yeah it just sets a standard uh, if we work it out that way so let's start with the pod because the pod has been on the market for the longest and they have basically set the standards for us so the pod nv 007a um, the well-known uh, one that's been on the market for the longest it's coming in at $359 the newer pod the NV007S is coming in at $549 and I would strongly recommend you if you want to buy something like that because it's a lot of money just save a bit more and rather buy yourself a dedicated a night vision scope it's just well worth it then the newcomer is the One Leaf NV100. It comes in at $299. And then our scope mate NVS90. This one comes in at $399. Now you're probably wondering why the heck should I then go buy a scope mate NVS90 if I can buy a pod? 
I know the scope mate is not the cheapest and it's not the, the most expensive but still why why would I go buy this if I can buy the pod because pod is a well-known brand and this is not to pick on pod really or on any other brand it's just value for money at the end of the day like my um, title of my video says Scopemate NVS the pod killer the reason why I say that this can record up to 120 frames per second in the day and you can do 60 frames at night you can try to do 120 frames at, at night but I think you're going to need more light and adding a secondary IR torch is probably not going to solve it for you it's just the way it works so the reason why 120 frames per second is good is you can slow your footage down you can um, slow uh, the 120 frames down a lot more and get it way more smoother than with 30 frames per second uh, pod and one leaf can only do um, 30 frames per second and probably not even in full hd where the scope mate can do all those frames 30 60 and 120 frames per second in full hd so um, that is actually why i say this is a pod killer why would you want to buy a pod if you want, can buy this and you can slow your, your footage down um, and not just that the fact that you get all these things like this proper clamp um, with it you don't have to go spend more money on a clamp um, and fiddle around the screws and nonsense uh, you know just puts it a step higher than the competition is this thing perfect not at all let me tell you not at all there's a lot of things that i don't like about it like i mentioned before the button the dedicated record button which i wish was there uh, the sleep mode and waking it up from sleep mode with the brightness not being um, where i want it to be um, you know they they won't be a perfect unit but they are room for improvement and currently i just think they are a step above the rest that's why i would strongly 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 recommend um, scope mate uh, a lot of ni nice people um, at Scopemate um, they really helped me very very quickly uh, when I had to get this one uh, here in South Africa so that's just my two cents around this whole thing sorry for the video maybe being too long um, but I just wanted to compare all these things uh, all these brands and models with each other a last thing that I quickly want to mention is the memory cards um, it is mentioned inside of the um, uh, the manual, but they recommend only using Kingston or Sanders Class 10 um, memory cards to record up uh, to 120 frames per second in full HD. So just keep that in mind. Um, your memory card might give you an error if it's not a Kingston or Sanders above or um, Class 10. Um, so yeah, now I just want to show you guys all my footage, daytime and at nighttime, and then uh, we can quickly wrap this one up with my verdict around this whole unit. Okay, so um, for the daytime, I quickly want to um, just quickly range towards a church tower that's more or less 300 meters away from where I'm sitting now. And I'm going to use the same footage or the same uh, place to show you guys the footage at night of how well the IR is working at night. Um, so just to show you guys that I'm not lying, I'm gonna try to line my rangefinder up and find it, press record here. Not so easy. There we go. very close to uh, 300 meters 298 meters on the furthest point so um, now you can see it is uh, close to 300 meters away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record through the scope mate as well and um, the scope is set at eight times magnification and at night is going to be the same so we can just compare all the data with each other so um, let's uh, 
quickly um, take a look through their scope mate. And there it's recording. I'm gonna try to keep steady. And now you can see during the day through the scope mate as well. Eight times magnification. Hundred and twenty frames per second. And uh, I must say it really looks nice. So um, now we have something to, to compare it uh, to the night time as well. So next up, just a quick indication uh, of what the 120 frames per second looks like more or less. I'm going to switch over to my Delta Wolf in 177 and then uh, just shoot some caps and so on at 30 meters and just slow it down for you guys to see how the footage looks like. Okay, so we're going to take a couple of shots uh, at plastic caps that I've put out at uh, 30 meters. And um, as you guys can see, the scope mate NVS90 is mounted on my immersive optics um, scope. This is the uh, 10 by 40, and uh, like you guys can see, it does work on the provided uh, or included uh, uh, plastic uh, rings that you can change inside of the the clamp or the mount. So uh, let's uh, start shooting, and then I can show you guys what the slow motion footage looks like. Okay, we are recording, so uh, let's go. Forgot the safety. Number one. and number three so uh, there you guys can see um, hundred and twenty frames per second so uh, not too bad so I could just want to show you the difference between the scope mates um, IR and then my uh, my IR torch which is standing right here as you guys can see um, oh, I don't really see anything so um, I just see the redness there so <laughs> is pitch black um, luckily my uh, camera that I'm using can pick up the uh, infrared so it's gonna make it uh, very interesting <coughs> excuse me so uh, let's quickly see what um, the IR torch can do and then we'll head over to the the scope mate and take it from there okay this is the IR torch and uh, as you can see, there is the church tower quite far away. There's a couple of things in the way, obviously. But uh, you'll see the difference between the, the IR torch and the scope mate itself. So if I take it away, it's dark. If I bring it up, it's very difficult to find. But there you can see it in the back. Um, if I zoom out, you can see there's the beam of the torch. Um, I'll try to make it a block. I think that's the best focus. Let's see if I can find uh, the tower again. As you can see, there's a tower very far away so uh, let's uh, switch on the uh, the scope mate and uh, let's see how, how uh, it does 
So I'm gonna point the camera towards that section there so I just know where to aim. Okay. Our torch is off. And we are going to switch on the IR of the scope mate. Just move my things out of the way here. Okay, it's on. And there we go. So this is on setting number one. Um, and as you can see through, through the scope mate itself, um, you can see there, I'm going to switch over to setting number two. Just find it here somewhere. That's setting number two. And then setting number three. So there you can see the different intervals. In my honest opinion, I think 300 meters is a little bit too far for hunting. Um, although there's ambient light around here with people's uh, yard lights and things being on, you can see, still see the IR going on and off. So if you're out in the field, I think um, it's going to work much better. You'll see way clearer, but the problem is ranging at night. So uh, just want to show you the difference. Um, in frame rates um, so uh, let's move the camera and then we'll take it from there okay so um, now I'm going to show you the difference between frame rates um, starting from 30 frames per second and uh, just show you how much light the scope mate needs at this distance um, and uh, what you can see through it through uh, various frame rates so starting at 30 frames per second, I'm going to hit the record button. It's recording. And uh, you can see there in the back, there's the, um, the church tower. And I'm going to switch on the IR and setting number one. And now you can see um, the tower did light up a little bit more. Setting number two. And it lightened up a little bit uh, more as well and then setting number three just want to get it in focus there we go i think that's there more or less so just again to show you guys that's off number one which is low medium and I 30 frames per second let's uh, stop the recording and head over to settings again frame rate 60 frames per second and now you can see that if I record the tower already started to become way darker so we need more light so uh, there you can see that's a power setting number one or low medium and high so 60 frames per second is still fine out to 300 meters i would say but um if we switch over to 120 frames per second um i think we're gonna struggle to see there's going to be a lot of grain um you might be able to see through it but i think the recording is not going to look as good as you want to um, so uh, let's test it out and see so let's uh, stop the recording i'm going to switch off the ir now it's off again as you guys can see let's stop the recording now it's off um, i'm heading over to the menu again and going to frame rates 120 frames per second and selecting that okay now i'm going to press record again And as you can see, that tower now with the IR off is really, really dark. There's just a lot of grain going on there now. So if I hit the IR, um, you can see it did light up a little bit, but there's still a lot of grain there. Um, we need more light, so it's on low now. 
medium it's still a very grainy and that is high number set uh, power setting number three so as you can see we need a lot of light to basically um, record in 120 frames per second that's why I th don't think you know at ranges uh, this way out um, 120 frames per second might be n not enough you know uh, to record proper video um, at night and then slow it down it's something that I will test when um, we do some hunting at night which I'm really looking forward to but um, I think this test really justify uh, the whole purpose of this um, uh, IR on the scope mate and uh, let me tell you I'm really really impressed with it um, I honestly didn't expect it's going to be this good so um, yeah that's that for the night um, footage um, I really think it's super super great so as you guys can see the daytime and the nighttime footage of this little unit is actually freaking good and the fact that this little AR torch can shine up to 300 meters at night as advertised it blew my mind I thought it was a sales gimmick but um, they proved me wrong um, so you're probably wondering with all this information that I gave you guys what's the vertical what what's your recommendation then and it's probably something that um, you weren't thinking I'm going to say but I'm going to say it as it is so here it goes if you have a budget of around four hundred dollars I would strongly recommend this and the reason for that is the technology inside of this is just a step or two above the rest um, and it's not to bang on any other brand it's just facts you can record up to 120 frames per second in daytime of this and at nighttime 60 frames per second where the rest can only do uh, 30 frames per second and that's just you know for something similar to this but if you have a budget of around uh, $550 plus rather than just save a bit more and buy yourself a dedicated night scope those night scopes can obviously record in daytime as well and can obviously record um, uh, in higher frame rates but if you are very limited to your budget and you want to record your footage and slow it down and shoot at night I cannot see why not to go with the Scopemate NVS90 that's just my opinion you can make of it what you want there will be links in the uh, video description to where you can find um, uh, these little uh, Scopemate NVS90s reach out to the uh, guys uh, of uh, Scopemate they are very nice people uh, they really helped me out very quickly when um, I bought this one also guys if uh, you like this video and you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up and also share it with some of your buddies that might be interested in or in the market of buying something like this maybe this video can help them decide if they want to you know buy something like this or rather save up and buy a dedicated uh, night vision scope maybe it will be helpful for them as well also remember to hit that uh, subscribe button with the bell notification down below if you want to see the upcoming videos where I use uh, uh, this uh, little bad boy I think you guys will find it interesting and fun thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.